Hey yo, and welcome to Callum's Corner. Welcome to the vlog. Right, good morning to you. This is going to be an exciting video because this weekend I am going up to Birmingham. Now, it was going to be an exciting weekend anyway. I was going up to Birmingham to go to um, Crepe City, which is like a, a, a like a trainer event, like a conference. I've seen loads on YouTube over in America, and it looks dead, dead good, like everyone getting together and talking about shoes and stuff. I thought it would be a good way to get myself out there and possibly make some friends and stuff. Um, anyway, I told Tom that I was going up to Birmingham. My friend Tom Stockdale, and he's free this weekend. Uh, so I'm meeting him up there too, and we're going to make some music. Music together. Uh, it's it's very exciting. The music making has kind of been on the hold recently because Tom's got a full time job. It's been a bit harder to, to get together with him, but I've had stuff I wanted to do for the longest time, and I've got like loads of different ideas. But I've I've made a decision. I am gonna make a diss track on Prince Andrew. Now it's it's not the most glamorous one, you know. I'd like to be making music about like you know, exciting, sexy stuff, but I feel like it's almost a public service that needs doing. Um, I did a song a few years back called No Nonsense to try and help spread the word, you know, bring it, you know, just bring the, the, the spotlight onto the paedophilia problem, but elbow in the door. But yeah, this Prince Andrew basically, he's a dirty little nonsense. He's trying to get away with it. He's paying people off and stuff. So I want to bring it back into the public domain. I want people talking about it. So yeah, that is what I'm going to do this weekend. Very exciting, right? Okay, um, I'm going to meet Tom tomorrow. I'm going up Birmingham tomorrow. I'm actually going up to London today. I thought I'd break up the journey a bit. I'm going to meet up with a couple of mates I went to uni with there, which should be good. Um, yeah, I guess it's time to get moving. I should do a little fit check. Um, it's a bit miserable outside, so I've got a hat on. Um, but I don't know, it might be a bit warm for that. We'll see when we get out. But it's provisionally I'm wearing a blue hat. Um, and my chop, my sweater... Uh, I got second hand uh, for £15 in its designer. Um, that is a little crocodile. It's a French brand, um, Lacoste. Uh, yeah, it's dead, dead nice. And it's got these little shoulder things. Yeah, I'm looking good, I think. And I've just got my skinny jeans on. You don't need to see those. Um, oh, Jordans. Yeah, you should probably see the Jordans. I'm going with these ones. Um, just, you know, travel safe. Don't want to go with a lighter pair that will get all scuffed up and dirty on the trains. Plus, you know, using, um, at some point, travelling. I'm going all the way up to Birmingham, London today, and then Birmingham tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to need to urinate on the train, most likely. And, you know, puddles of pee is what you're going to be faced with in public toilets on trains. Swishing back side to side, mini tsunamis of urine. Uh, yeah, so I've gone for the darker Jordans. Right, I need to get moving. I've got to go catch the boat. But yeah, um, I'm going to be vlogging it. Oh, it's going to be a good weekend. Right, I'm in Pompey now. Things are going reasonably well. Although I have spilled my, my frothy coffee on my white top, which is a bit of an irritation. Anyway, I'm going to pop over to co-op and pick up the meal deal in a minute before I get on the train, uh, which I will show you, obviously, reveal the meal deal. But I just wanted to show you where I was, really. Um, down there... Is where a little boat comes. It used to um, used to catch as a kid that take me over to my grandma's. Um, and you can kind of see this is all built like over the sea. I remember being a kid and waiting for the boat, thinking there were probably monsters living down there underneath. Um, in the kind of dark recesses of the waters. I used to have this quite vivid fantasy actually that I'd fall down there as a kid and a monster would take me, but a mermaid would save me. Um, obviously now as a grown up, I know how ridiculous that is. A mermaid would never be this close to kind of a settlement, they live far out at sea, I believe, you know, all the ancient kind of accounts of mermaids are far out at sea, they wouldn't be hanging around people, it just doesn't make sense, but as a child, I guess, you kind of, you lack those analytical skills. Anyway, I'm going to head over to Gold now, let's go get a bit there. I'm in London, yes, I have arrived, and my journey was proper good today, it went really well and quickly, so that's good. Um, my Airbnb, which I've just checked into, this is the kitchen area, um, yeah, proper decent, got an absolute bargain, so things are going well, I'm feeling happy, although, sadly, it's not all about happiness and frivolity, we do need to speak about something serious, because I'm pretty sure the Queen is about to die, 
Um, I've been using my logical mind, analysing the statement that's come out of the palace today about her being like a bit ill and the family going up there, and I'm pretty sure she's going to die. Um, like all the family going there and the fact that news readers have noticed are starting to put on black outfits. Um, it just, it's, you know, using your mind analytically. Uh, I think she's about to snop it if she hasn't already. Um, now, this is, it's quite a momentous day if it, that indeed does happen because she's been queen for a very long time. And also, um, it seems a bit like coincidental, basically. I'm in London for this happening, you know, London, it's the Queen's place. If it was like seven, 800 years ago and I was in London and the Queen had died, I'd probably be trying to mount a takeover of the bloody throne and stuff. I mean, sadly, we don't live in good times like that anymore. We live in boring times, but still, the Queen dying while I'm in London, you'd think that London will do something to mark the occasion, wouldn't you? Like big bed ringing and I don't know. I just think it might kick off a bit because it's London and it's the Queen. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a sad day when anyone dies. I'm not a big fan of the royal family. I'm not a big fan of the Queen. I know everyone goes, oh, she's done her duty so well. I mean, if your duty is living in multiple palaces and, you know, having the most incredible life, then yeah, okay, it's not really duty, is it? And people say, oh, she works hard. You know, she's always working. Yeah, but if your work is going out for dinner and meeting people, the most interesting, smart, successful people in the world, again, it's not really a duty. Um, but I don't, I don't want to sag her off too much today, you know, especially if it does indeed happen today. Um, and even if she's just ill and it happens in a couple of days, I shouldn't be too harsh here. It's just, well, let it just be what it is, you know, the Queen, I think, dying. But yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting that it's happening while I'm in London. Right, I need to get myself in gear because I'm meeting my mates very soon. I'm going to jump in the shower and head out for some drinks, but... Yeah, I'll keep you updated on the Queen situation. Hey up and good morning from my very stressed and hungover self. Um, first things first, the Queen is dead. I told you, I knew it was coming. Um, basically, I, I got the news through yesterday evening when I was out drinking with my mates. So it was an elephant in castle um, and it kind of came through my phone. And I was expecting, like, I don't know what I was expecting, but something to happen, like... Oh, it's not nice coming back up again. You know how on like New Year's Eve all the cars start beeping and stuff or I don't know, I was expecting like Big Ben to start like dong 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 like the bells in Game of Thrones and stuff. It was quite anticlimactic to be fair. Um nothing really happened. Like people obviously got their news, you could see them like reading it on their phones and stuff, but it wasn't like London came to a standstill or anything like that. Anyway, um, carried on drinking, um, and as I got drunker, I got the idea in my head that it was a really good idea for me to head over to Buckingham Palace and, um, you know, live vlog the Queen's death, go and join the celebrations and stuff. Um, it wasn't a good idea. It took me ages to get over there. By the time I got to Buckingham Palace, my phone bloody died. I had no battery, so I couldn't phone. It was peeing down everywhere. Um, and it was just silent. Everyone was just really quiet. I don't know what I was expecting again, but for something to be happening, I don't know. I thought they might be firing cannons out of Buckingham Palace or something, salutes and stuff. It was just a really damp squid. Um, and talking of damp squids, uh, my phone has been the other issue. It basically died while I was there, so I had to rely on my memory and get my way back to the Airbnb, which is a nightmare. Luckily, I remembered the, the cold for the door downstairs and stuff. Um, but when I got in, I'd sobered up quite a bit by this point because of the rain and stuff. Um, I tried to charge up my phone so I could do a vlog update and watch stuff, and um, basically, moisture in the port again. I don't know whether it's from the rain or whether it is like a proper issue with my phone because it seems to be doing it all the time. But I think it must have been the rain because it still wasn't working this morning. That was the thing as well, like this morning. No alarm on my phone. Luckily, it's London, so all the traffic outside woke me up super early. But it was still saying moisture, so I had to run down the, the corner shop. Like, luckily, because it's London, there you know quite a few of them are kind of like... Um, of ethnic origin, so I was able to get a bag of rice fairly easily first thing this morning, which is what I did, um, it, is, it has now charged, so that's a relief. 
Anyway, it's left me very short of time. I've got to get my stuff together and I've got to go catch the train to Birmingham. But I guess at least I was in London for the death of the Queen, although it, I may as well have been anywhere because nothing really happened. Yeah, oh, it's so loud. Right, I'm going to get moving. I'm leaving London and I'm going to Birmingham. It's maybe the slightest of improvements, but it's basically arse to arse. Yeah, it's not a pleasant, it's not going to be nice. I don't enjoy London and I don't particularly enjoy Birmingham as cities. They're just not very friendly. Okay, I'm going to get moving. I'm going to go catch the train. I'll speak to you guys later. I think with the greatest respect the passing of Princess Diana, which was almost 25 years ago, actually over 25 years ago, the Queen and her I got on the train and I could not believe my eyes. What kind of evil sorcery was this? Food available, delivered to your seat, on a train. Incredible. Anyway, I was too impatient to wait for the service to start, so I went off and found a food carriage, and I managed to secure myself a hot bacon roll, a frothy coffee, and even ketchup to go in the roll. What a result. The music making process has begun. Tom is here. Say yeah. hey, Tom. Yeah. Uh, we just had a magical moment that I wanted to share with you. I looked at Tom and I said to him, we were talking about this little bit of the track, like how we want to do it. And he was like, well, it doesn't sound quite right. And I looked at him and I said, well, what about if we do it with pure bass rather than like strings that we were going to use? And he looked back at me and what did you say? That's exactly what I was about to say. It's exactly what he was going to say. On the same wavelength. This is, oh, is going to be bloody brilliant. Hey, up and good morning to you. What a time it is to be alive. What a time it is to be in the corner. Um, spent last night just blood, sweat and tears into songwriting. Um, although, no spunk, I should specify. I know some of you will be like, oh, spunk too. No, no spunk. Just blood, sweat and tears. Um, yeah, we work really, really hard on this Prince Andrew diss track. It's going to be a bloody banger. Um, but today, um, it's time to let my laser light gaze leave Prince Andrew, let him out of the crosshairs just for a short moment um, to go and celebrate sneakers, shoes. You know, well, hopefully you know by right now, I've got a bloody love of Jordans. I bought my first pair a couple of years ago, probably nearly three years ago now. Um, and despite all of you trying to pretend that they were fake and ruining the experience for me. It's become to be something I love. I've started a collection. So um, I'm heading to see some lovely Jordans. I myself am wearing, um, this is called a Fit Check, Tom. Did you know that? No, I, I don't know whether it's called a Fit Check because of the way your clothes fit you or because it's short for like outfit. Maybe. I've never known. Could be either, couldn't it? Could be. Two birds, one stone. Anyway, I am wearing a Levi, um, jean shirt which i got on ebay second hand pre-loved it's about 20 years old it's only 12 pound 50 but it's got a lovely aged look um over a nike t-shirt kind of appropriate as we go into see lots of nike shoes um jeans nice skinny jeans suits my body type um, and then we've got my personal grail which is a cold in sneaker community so like the shoe you wanted the most uh, the Hyper Royals. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be rocking those today. Right, let's go and see some shoes. Just got back from Crep City, um, slightly underwhelmed, slightly disappointed. I mean, there were trainers for days there, do you know what I mean? You could have built a castle from the amount of trainers that were there. But from the, like, the trainer events I've watched over in American stuff, there's like this like community feel and people are chatting and it's all like friendly and stuff. This one felt a little bit more like a competition to see who had the most expensive trainers on. Um, and I certainly wasn't the winner, but yeah, just a little bit disappointing. Went out to the bull ring afterwards, um, which is, yeah, 
it is what it is. It's Birmingham, isn't it? And I'm, you know, I'm sorry if you do live in Birmingham, but, um, well, I'm sorry if you live in Birmingham, basically. Yeah, it's one of my least favourite places. Anyway, all is not lost. It gives us more time to work on the track. So we're going to throw ourselves into it now and, um, yeah, get recording the vocals. The magic is about to start. We're about to start laying down the vocals. But I just wanted to show you the little setup because I know it probably seems like the tracks are these ultra professional, amazing things, but literally, you know, recorded on a microphone just propped up with a um, PlayStation 2 game. PlayStation 2 in this Airbnb for some reason. Bonus, I guess. But yeah, that is the setup. And there is Dale Tomstock, Mr. Grafting. Emo, grafting away. Putting the prep in. Um, yeah, I'm going to go now because I need to start spitting. We are right in the middle of recording the audio. You know, laying down the vocals, laying down the track. It is bloody hard work. But I kind of wanted to um, interrupt the creative process a little bit and just share with you, like, just how much goes into it. Um, recording the audio, like, spitting the bars is always the most difficult part for me. You know, I'm... I'm musically inclined, I'm talented, I've got the rhythm, I'm, you know, a good dancer and stuff. Um, but it's like the the actual singing, the spitting in the bars is kind of probably the the weakest part of my um repertoire. Um it's yeah, it's like trying to draw blood from a stone at times. But this bit has been particularly difficult. Let me give you an idea of what I'm giving up to to spread this message out there, to start this conversation. I have personally just spat the word, just um, wrapped the word nonce 532 times intensively over like a 20 minute period. I barely want to say the word nonce again at this point, And it's one of my favorite words. So, you know, that's what I'm putting on the line here. Um, yeah, just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea of what goes into this. It's not always easy. It's sometimes it's hard, but it feels good. It feels good. It's that going well. Yeah. The vocals are done. This must be what Da Vinci felt like after he'd finished the Mona Lisa. It is an incredible feeling. I know from like the pit of my soul that this is the best work we've done in a very long time. Maybe even ever. Yeah, I'm I'm pleased with it. Tom, you're pleased with it? Absolutely fantastic. Big banger. Yeah. Anyway, like the kings that we are now, we are gonna set our hunger as a reward for a job very well done. Um, basically, I didn't film this last night because we were too busy writing this stuff, you know, creative juices flowing. But we got some burgers last night and it was incredible. Really, this should be like filmed for a, a one-off burger battles episode. They were that bloody good. They're called Smash Burgers. Um, and I've got them on the way now. A delivery person is cycling them over. Why do you, they shouldn't let them on bikes. Like, if you've got hot food, you want at least a moped, if not a car. Shouldn't let them on bikes. Um, but it's on its way, and I will show you when it gets here. It's bloody good, though. It's just incredible. Taste sensation. Oh, my God. I've realised I've done exactly what I did last night. As soon as the food got here, I've just started gobbling it down. I didn't get any recording last night, and I've nearly done the same. It is so bloody good. A burger should not be able to be this good legally. Look at that. Double smashed patty. American cheese for days. Bacon is so crispy. It's just gorgeous. Chips are up 7, 8 out of 10 as well. Just, it's, um, <coughs> it's amazing. It tastes so good and I'm eating it so quick. Me and Tom were saying to each other, weren't we? Wish we could kind of savour it and like enjoy it like to its fullest, but it's just so good. Mm. Oh, that was amazing. I feel proper, proper satisfied. Like, my hunger has been totally sated. You know, when you've had, like, a really good meal and there's been a lot of it and you get that kind of dreamy, contented feeling? It's almost orgasmic. I'm getting that. It kind of... Have, um. Kind of reminds me, well, not reminds me, because I haven't actually been a medieval king, but it makes me think of what that, like, medieval kings, that must have been what it was like, wasn't it? You know, in the big banquet halls, just endless reams of food, gorging yourself, stuffing your face, you know, getting all a bit drunk and rowdy, that kind of satisfied fullness, just, and probably like a box and wench to top it off. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Lovely box and wench, nice pink nipples. Um... 
yeah, it's been a while, actually. I do need to get laid. Hey, up top, you're back in. I'm just saying I feel absolutely incredible. Satisfying beyond belief by that burger. Totally satiated. Bloody, bloody brilliant. Love it. Ten, ten, ten out of ten. ten. Good morning to you all. Um... It is Sunday, and normally Sundays fill me with a feeling of dread, a kind of searing depression. If Sundays were a body part, they would be the anus of the week. Um, but today, it is totally different. I am filled with a delicious anticipation, incredible excitement, because me and Tom, um, in a little bit, we're going to go and film the music video, the whole proper diss track music video to Prince Andrew. The video is always key. I really want it to, to convey the right energy. Um, yeah, it's all feeling very, very um, important, the work that we're doing here. I was um, I was Googling a little bit because I know um, the gang did like a Prince Andrew diss track. I just wanted to have a little watch of his to make sure it wasn't like, our song wasn't anything like his, his channel was deleted over this. Um, that is the stakes we're dealing with, that the establishment will go to, to hide his Nazi actions. That could be what I face, you know, this could be, well, it is really, it's an all or nothing situation. You know, my channel, I've spent, what, six, seven years building, it's been everything to me, but I am willing to risk that, to, you know, to get the conversation going again. It needs to be talked about what he did. He can't just walk away from this. This, you know, this is the hill that I am prepared to die on. You, yeah, take everything from them and you give them nothing. Glory, glory, Callum's Corner. Good morning to you all. Right, it is pretty much time for me to check out of the Airbnb. Um, Tom went home last night. He had to work this morning, so I was left here alone last night. I just scuffled round and got everything kind of cleaned and tidied up. Got my packing done, got myself ready. Um, normally on like the last day of a trip, I get a bit of like the post, um, the like kind of the last day blues, especially if I'm kind of left here alone. But I didn't have any of that last night. There was none of the kind of, uh, the trips over kind of feeling. It's, um, the whole thing has, it's, it's relit a fire underneath me. I feel like I've been reignited doing this Prince Andrew diss track. It feels like it's where I'm meant to be. I'm doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing, you know, it's taken ages to meet up with Tom to get this film because he works and stuff now. Um, so it feels like I'm kind of number one, on clogging a pipe, um, and number two, doing exactly what I was made to do. You know, I'm a person, my chemical kind of compound, my makeup, um, it enjoys uh, confrontation and adversity. I like to fight the good fight. And, you know, my last songs have been good, you know, the Here We Come one, the celebration of the corner is lovely, but. You know, what I thrive on is a confrontation. So, yeah, I'm feeling actually very, very excited to get home. I'm feeling very excited to get this track out. I'm feeling like, yeah, I'm finally marching on like I should be doing. I'm really annoyed at myself. Um, I'm at the train station. Um, and I didn't leave enough time to get to a Tesco's, Morrison's, Co-op, any of those things. I had to drop the keys off at a garage, um, which took me out of my way. And basically... Rather than a good four pound meal deal, I've had to go to the train station prep, um, proper touring, um, and it's cost me more than a tenner. It's a long, long train journey, though. Couldn't risk not having one, so it's the price that I've paid for my own disorganisation. Although I did get a frothy coffee there, um, which I guess will pump the price up a little bit. Yeah, nice. Train should be here soon. Right, I am back home again now, and it's been a bit of a jolting return to reality in terms of my mother. Um, she has just lost her shizzle over the Queen's death. She's obsessed with the royal family. It's ridiculous. Um, she needs to pull herself together. I'm not having a repeat of the bloody Princess Diana situation, picking up the pieces again. No way, Jose. Um, it's unfortunate, but I'm clinging to the, the kind of great satisfaction that I feel from a fantastic weekend. It was bloody brilliant to catch up with Tom, spend time with him. Um, and the song, it's, yeah, that has been brewing inside me for the longest time. You know, all this nonsense and hype about the royal family going on at the moment. I am going to cut right through that like a knife. 
um, yeah, I cannot wait for it to be finished. My bit's done now, you know, the vocals. I've done my dancing on the streets of Birmingham and stuff. It's in the hands of other people now to, to pull together the magic. But I can't wait to share it with you. It just it feels fantastic to be making music again. And um, more than that, um, it feels fantastic to be vlogging again. I'm dead, dead enjoying it again, uh, which is is a great feeling. Um, and also, I feel like I'm... I'm kind of moving with a purpose, you know, I'm standing, I'm fighting against the nonsense. Really. I'm making people aware, aware of, you know, just how deviant the Prince Andrew situation is. I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I, I think I might even go up to London for the, for the Queen's funeral, you know, I'm going to have my say on all this. Um, I'm going to do a video as well after, you know, they've got her in the ground, just kind of reviewing Prince Charles because, um, you know, I'm already seeing some worrying signs, you know, he's... <laughs> His hands, for one, don't you see them? Each of his fingers look like an overstuffed sausage. Um, I've seen clips of him already, like, getting irritated and stuff, making really gimpy, posh little faces, like... You know, like, it was basically, there was something on the desk, like, that was the worst thing in the world for him. Like, do me a favour, mate. Yeah, a lot of overprivilege, a lot of stuff that annoys me, a lot of stuff that I am going to deal with and I'm bloody relishing being back in the saddle. Uh, I'm going to end this vlog here, edit, edit it up because, um, yeah, uh, I want them to flow. If you did enjoy the video, um, please do leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, uh, please do leave a dislike. Um, and, yeah, thank you very much for watching.